Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Laila Mohan. Um, she is my dynamic mentor. And over to you, madam. She is the head of department of uh, Comtrust Eye Hospital, Calicut. Thank you, Dr. Angushi. Uh, so now we move on to a, uh, uh, next uh, condition, a complex strabismus where we need an imaging to decide surgery. Myopic strabismus fixes or strabismus fixes convergence and uh, heavy eye syndrome also as it is called is an acquired esotropia with hypotropia seen in high myopia of uh, usually more than 15 diopters and axial length more than 20, 27 millimeters. And there is progressive ESO and hypotropia which fixes the eye in adduction and abduction and elevation is limited. And traditionally, recess resection were used to be done which is ineffective and may even aggravate. Due, so proper surgical planning with imaging is important to address the pathology. And pathophysiology is unique in this case. So, Huguenot first described in 1969 uh, this condition and he believed it to be due to structural changes and fibrous tissue in lateral rectus. Bagolini in 70s explained it by myopathy of lateral rectus due to pressure on the lateral orbital wall due to a large eyeball and a long eye, the eye going in and down due to gravity playing a role gave the name uh, heavy eye syndrome. And Demer and Von Oden in 1989 showed the restrictive nature due to the posterior part of the eyeball being in contact with the orbital apex. And by MRI, with the advent of high resolution MRI in 1997, it was Krzysztof uh, who showed that there is progressive prolapse of the staphylomatous globe into the posterolateral quadrant of the orbit between the lateral, and, lateral rectus and superior rectus. And this was the basis for Yokoyama surgery uh, in 2000. So after this MRI, high resolution MRI, uh, the uh, treatment modality has changed completely. So uh, coming to the MRI findings, uh, progress, there is progressive protrusion of the globe through the, this defect and orbital connective tissue ligaments between the lateral rectus and superior rectus degenerates and thins out and the uh, coronal sections in front of optic nerve globe junction about 9, nine millimeters in front of it shows the actual pathology that is inferior displacement of lateral rectus, which weakens abduction and converts it into a depressor, and nasalization of the superior rectus, which weakens elevation and converts it into an adductor. Thus, the isotropia and hypotropia. So you can see here, uh, the, there is a, what we call the globe dislocation angle uh, between the lateral rectus and superior rectus. It's about 100 degree in the normal uh, uh, individuals, which increases to almost six, 160 or even more, uh, and can be assessed before and after surgery in these cases. Uh, so uh, the differentials are sagging eye syndrome, as shown by Dr. Aungshi. Uh, there is a degeneration of intermuscular septum, and soft tissue prolapses there, and lacrimal gland also, but not, uh, no prolapse of the globe. And though there is this, uh, graves of thalmopathy is another condition uh, to be differentiated, of course, by uh, imaging we can and uh, history. And long-standing six nerve palsy sometimes confuses us uh, when it is bilateral, especially myasthenia when it is long-standing and untreated can uh, occasionally confuse with this condition. And often clinical examination is diagnostic and history of high myopia with a long axial length and MRI are diagnostic. So there are, uh, um, uh, so coming to the surgical management, more important than reinforcing the action of muscle by recess resection is the normalizing of the an anatomic path of the recti uh, to prevent globe prolapse. And suturing of lateral rectus, superior rectus, 15 millimeter behind limbus with non-absorbable suture was suggested, uh, which gave good results. And partial Jensen's muscle splitting and reunion of muscle be belly. Uh, which also in some cases proved to be useful and gave a good outcome. And some of the modifications were more, uh, suturing it at two, three points because one suture does not hold enough. And uh, because the distance between the two muscles are also big and sometimes cheese wiring also can occur. So a hemi-transposition of the superior rectus and lateral rectus with scleral fixation at seven millimeters from the insertion was uh, proposed by Yamadas. All these gave some good results, but not all cases. And uh, this unites the muscle pulley and pushes back the herniated eyeball back into the muscle cord. 
and studies are there with and without scleral fixation, with or without medial rectus recession. Uh, after doing a force duction test, if the medial rectus is tight, and Botox injection and medial rectus recession can be contemplated because uh, me, uh, when three muscles are tackled, there is a risk of anterior segment ischemia. So uh, the modified silicon band loop myopexy is now somewhat universally accepted because uh, the suture technique has the risk of cheese wiring because the muscles are very tight and the anterior segment uh, ischemia is also there, risk of anterior segment ischemia. You can see uh, when you hook the superior, it is completely medially, uh, uh, the superior rectus is nasally displaced. Uh, that is the, um, behind the superior rectus, you can, uh, you, there is a risk of uh, catching hold of the superior oblique, which you can see there. And uh, lateral rectus completely displaced downward. There is a large distance between the two, especially when it goes, the muscle is traced backwards. You can see it is displaced backward. And uh, with loop myopexy and medial rectus, it gives very good results. And uh, the, there is no risk of uh, uh, cheese wiring and uh, breakage of sutures as in suture technique of myopexy. So with the silicon band, either you can take it in, through a tunnel in the sclera or after suturing, you can fix it also into the sclera. So, uh, and you have to fix the muscle well backward behind 8 to 10 millimeters behind the insertion. So choosing the procedure according to the angle, most of the studies uh, are done in East Asian countries. We, are, uh, we don't see the strabismus fixes that often and uh, 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 they have sub, uh, suggested that partial Jensen's procedure works for uh, angle of prism between 30 to about 100, uh, 120 prisms when done bilaterally and Yokoyama's procedures up to 40 prisms and Yokoyama, Yokoyama procedure with recession of medial rectus in cases from about uh, 15 to 90 prisms of uh, isotropia. And the, these are the, some of the newer techniques where there is a surgical interlacing. You split the uh, split half of superior and lateral rectus, and the lateral rectus is taken through the superior rectus uh, medial half, a lateral half, and then suture it back to the insertion so that there is no chance for prolapse of the globe through the uh, space between the superior and lateral rectus. So there are some complications. Uh, histopathological examination of the eyeballs from patients have shown oscular ischemia and atrophy of optic nerve or uh, CRA occlusion. So uh, due to the mechanical stretching and torsion of the optic nerve with subsequent strangulation of blood supply. So early correction of strabismus is, uh, uh, fixes is recommended. So to summarize, myopic strabismus fixes has a unique pathophysiology due to the elongation and staphyloma of the globe can be definitively documented by my MRI or CT scan. The surgical sub approach is specific to this condition and reunion of muscle bellies gives good results. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Laila, for that uh, uh, very nice presentation on loop myopexy. I have one question. Is there any chance of extrusion of this uh, silicon band? Uh, I had very few cases, two cases, they are doing very well. And uh, uh, silicon band I have found even in uh, uh, superior oblique spacer uh, when I have used for Brown syndrome, they don't produce much of a reaction or extrusion. I've never had one. Thank Any you. chance of recurrence of the same problem? Uh, uh, actually, in one case, we had a medial rectus recession done in childhood in this uh, lady, uh, which she, did, she was not aware of. Uh, she presented after 50 years and uh, she had presented with a uh, uh, large esotropia. So if there is a uh, uh, force duction test is positive and if there is no way you can tackle the medial rectus, sometimes it can, it can produce some under correction. But some amount of esotropia still gives good results for the motility of the eye uh, and uh, the patients are very happy. I think our time is over. We will conclude the session. Thank you all for a very patient hearing. I thank all the speakers for very nice uh, presentations.